Hi, I'm Kayla, and in this video, I'm doing a requested question. We're going to be looking at a trigonomic curve and figuring out where certain values occur. So this is a word problem taken from a book, and I'm just going to read that problem out here. It says, the height in meters of a nail in a water wheel above the surface of the water as a function of time can be modeled by the following function, which is what's written out here. During what periods of time is the nail below the water in the first 24 seconds that the wheel is rotating? So that's the question, and now I need to figure out what the answer is. So let's first look at this and get an idea of what this curve looks like. Now you don't need to do this, but it helps me um, visualize the question better. So first you should already have the curves uh, sine and cos memorized. So this is sine x. You know the maximum and minimum are 1 and negative 1. The period is 2 pi or 360 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to look at this, and just in general, um, when you're looking at graphing one of these curves, uh, the negative is the reflection, the 4 is the uh, vertical stretch or compression, this is the horizontal stretch or compression, the phase shift, and the uh, axis of the curve. So if I look at this one, I know that my axis is occurring at 2.5. I know that there's a shift over to the right one, so that's where it starts. I know that this is going to be um, going down to my minimum first because of that vertical reflection, like so. And then because it's stretched by four, it's probably going to look something a bit more like this. Okay, so now I have a general idea of what this actually looks like. Now, the question asked me, when is the nail below the water in the first 24 seconds? So, the 24 seconds is just telling you how long do you need to calculate this for. I don't care about that. I care about just uh, for the period of the curve, where is the nail below water? So if you're looking at this, we can assume that zero is the water level because this is modeling the height above water. So when the height is zero, I know that I'm going to be um, either entering or exiting the water. So in this case, down here, is all water. Like this. There. Okay, so I need to figure out then what these two values are here. Because between um, it entering the water and exiting the water, then they will be under the water. So I'm looking for two answers initially, and then we'll figure out the rest. So before I do anything, I'm going to figure out what the period of this curve is. Okay, so there's a standard equation for doing this. Some people just, you know, kind of use common sense or do it in their head, but this is a nice little equation. So the period is always equal to 2 pi over your k value. Your k value is right here. If you don't know why that's a k value, then you need to first look at a tutorial on just simple graphing um, the trigonomic curves. But if, if you know what it is already, that's good. This should be pretty obvious that is the k value. So, um, so now that we know that what the k value is, we're going to say this is equal to 2 pi divided by k, which is equal to 2 pi times 4 over pi, and that's just fractions. I like writing it out horizontal so it's easier to see. So the pi's cancel out, and our period is 8 seconds. So what we know is that it takes 8 seconds for this nail on the wheel to do a full rotation um, from starting here to go down into the water, out of the water, back up, and then back down again. Okay, so now what we need to do is figure out those, those marks there that I marked in the red X. What are those values? Because those values, right between those values, are going to give me my very first answer to this question. They're going to tell me 
when that wheel entered the water or the nail entered the water and left the water. And the value between those is going to be that range. So that'll tell me my answer. So what I'm going to do then is just make a little room here. Okay, I just erased that. If you need to copy that down, obviously just rewind the video. So the next part then is saying, like I said, at what value are we entering the water? We already said the water is when the height is zero. So I'm going to plug in zero for my height. There, I should leave my graph. Okay, so zero is equal to negative four times the sine pi over four t minus one plus 2.5. Okay, so I hope from this part it becomes apparent that we're going to obviously have to rearrange and isolate for t. So that's going to be negative 2.5 divided by four negative 4 is equal to the sine your calculator should be in radians or you're going to have to convert to radians along the way so at this point we need to get sine away from all of this and to do that we need to get the sine inverse of the left side of course 2.5 over 4 is positive now Okay, so this is what we have. Now, when we do this in our calculator, we're going to get what we call a reference angle. So let's first put that in and see what we get. Okay, so this is going to give you uh, 0.67513 and so on. So if you didn't get that and you got, say, like 38, then your calculator is uh, in percentage and uh, you just need to change it over. Okay, this is not our answer. What this is, is the sine inverse of uh, what I've got right here, but it's a reference angle. Okay, so this is a whole thing by itself. Um, so you should have done before is looked at different quadrants and you've said maybe that in the first quadrant sine cos and tan are positive and the second quadrant um, like sine is positive and cos is negative etc. So uh, what you need to do is use those to figure out two angles. So whenever you do the sine inverse of something like this and this kind of type of equation you are going to get two answers. Always two answers. Two. You have to have two. So let me just erase this and go back and so I'll have some space, and we can look at how to do the rest. Okay, so this is my reference angle. I need to figure out what the actual two angles are. I took the sine inverse of 2.5 over 4. This was uh, positive. I need to figure out where sine is positive. Okay, here's our Cartesian plane. Okay, so now looking at here, remembering Sokotoa, We know that in the first one, O over H, A over H, all those numbers, they're all positive because our x-axis is positive and our y-axis is positive. So everything is positive in this quadrant. Looking at the second quadrant, quadrant two. If I did, now remember this is my angle I'm looking at if you're confused, right here. Each one of these, this is your angle. This is your beta, your reference angle. So looking here, um, 
this is the triangle. It always makes the, the right angle here with the axis over H. The O, the opposite right here, O, is positive because we're on the positive section of the Y axis. So over H, H is always positive, gives you a positive number. But look at this instead. If I were to do the cos of this triangle, A here is on the bottom. A is on the negative side of the X axis. So if I did here the cos of theta, I would have a negative A over H, which would give me a negative. So in this quadrant, sine is positive, cos is negative. And tan, tan is O over A. So uh, the opposite, which we said was positive, and the A, in this case negative, gives you a negative. So tan is negative. Let's go to the bottom one. Okay, so for each of these, you see that I am drawing a little triangle. So the triangle has to be drawn with the x-axis. So I'm, I'm making the angle with the x-axis, and I'm drawing the triangle on it. Now again here, looking at this theta, if I go over h, my sign. Now, y is negative because I'm below zero on the y. Um, I'm, I'm getting the negative range. So this is negative here um, over h. h is positive, so sine is negative down here. Cosine. Cosine is also negative because um, we're looking here at the negative x-axis now. My a, my adjacent, is the negative x-axis. So it's negative over hypotenuse, so cos is negative. And then tan is O over A, uh, which is a negative over a negative, so tan becomes positive. If you're completely confused by this point, go back to just simple Sokotoa and, and look at O over H, A over H, and, and over A. It sounds kind of confusing when you're looking at it all at once, uh, but this should be the first time you've seen this. So I can do a separate tutorial on this particular part, um, but you should have seen this at least once or twice already. I'm just kind of explaining it a little bit further. So now the fourth quadrant here, four, there. Um, we're looking again at this triangle. And we see that uh, O over H is negative, so sine is negative. A, uh, A over H, the adjacent side, is positive now, so cos is positive, and tan, which is the negative y over the positive a, is negative. Okay, so now I've done all that, and it looks a little messy, um, you come back to this reference angle. And the reference angle existed to tell you of, to help you find two more angles. So the reference angle is positive. We sign. We have a sign of a positive number. We have a positive. So we need to ask ourselves, in which two, and there's always two, just two, not three, not four, two, in which two quadrants are is is sign positive? You're looking here. So you have four options. You need to pick two. Okay. So because we need to pick two, we'll go look at this and we'll say, okay, all are positive in the first quadrant. So okay. First quadrant's good. We like that. Take the first quadrant. When else is sine positive? Sine is positive in the second quadrant. Why? Because of O over H, which is our Sokotoa, which we already said, and we say right here, we said that sine was positive. And sine was positive because O over H gives you a positive number. So, therefore, we know that sine uh, is positive in the first and in the second quadrant. And these are my first two answers. So let me go back now. I'm just going to erase this because it's, it's a lot. So we've established that. If you don't know why I chose that, then go back to when we first solved for that angle. We solved for the sine inverse of 2.5 over 4. We found the reference angle, which was 0.675. And again, I said the reference angle, not the answer, though it actually will be the answer, but uh, the reference angle. And then I said, I don't know if this is the answer. I need to first figure out where sine is positive. So I did that. I found it was positive in the first and the second quadrant. And now here I am continuing the question. So because it was positive in both those quadrants, then I can assume that this is that angle there and this angle here. 
okay. So this is my 0.675 or the 30 something uh, degrees that it is. So one answer for this, because um, I'm solving for, I should call these beta actually, I'm solving for this, the angle from the initial axis here all the way around to both the sides. So one answer is 0.675. However, the other answer is going to be this, um, this angle right here. And this it comes back to grade 10 now, or maybe grade 11, but you can solve for the angle here in the second quadrant, that, that large angle, by saying 180 degrees minus my little angle will give me whatever is left over. So that's what I'm going to do. But of course, because we're in radians, I need to uh, use pi instead. So 2 pi is 360, 1 pi is 180. So I can do pi minus 0.675. And that's going to give you my second answer. OK, so we'll just put that in the calculator. and I get 2.467. I hate rounding like this. You should try not to round until the final answer. So our two answers so far are 0 0.675 and 2.467. Now to go back and solve this question, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 0.675 is equal to pi over 4 times t minus 1 and two point four six seven is equal to pi over four times t minus one. Okay, and if you haven't guessed this already, both of these are going to lead to my first two x's here that I marked. Because I plugged the zero in, I solved the little tricky part with the sign. You had to figure out the two angles. We have them. Now I need to just simply rearrange. Sorry, I put that backwards. Oh, the razor caught it. Okay. There, it was a little messy. So, uh, for the first one then, you're dividing the left side by pi over 4, so you you switch the fraction, and it's times by 4 over pi, um, which gives you the numerator over the denominator like that. And then on the left, on the right side, sorry, it's the same thing. So now I can just plug both these in my calculator and get two answers. So for the first one, I'm getting one. 0.859 and the second one I am getting 4.141 okay so this is great because now I have just solved for these two points right here and I know that the curve, because I know how it looks, uh, the nail went down, it broke through the water at 1.859 seconds, then it went to the minimum, it came back up, it passed through the water again at 4.14 seconds, and it kept going up, and then back down until it hits the water again. And because the question said, 
um, where is the nail below water in the first 24 seconds, or, or when is the nail below water, what it's really saying is that this wheel is turning and turning, and I know that it does a full turn every 8 seconds. But because it's asking for the 24 seconds, it's really asking you for three full turns of this wheel. So all you're going to do is say, okay, well, I know that if it broke through the water at 1.859 seconds, it's going to do the exact same thing one whole period later. And if it came up out of the water at 4.14 seconds, well, it's going to come out of the water again a period later. So because the period is 8 seconds, I only need to do a very simple addition to each of these numbers. So... Um, so the first answer, I should say, officially, is 1.859 um, is less than uh, t, which is less than 4.141. Um, I don't know if you want to include equals here. Technically, I guess it's exactly breaking the water, the height zero, so it's not below the ground yet. So I'm saying that. But I think, I think that's fine if you did equals as well. So, uh, so that's my first answer. Okay, and then my second answer is going to be um, 1.859 plus 8, which is 9.859 is less than t, which is less than uh, 4.141 plus 8. 12.141 uh, is my second answer. My third answer will be, of course, 9.859 plus 8, which is 17.859 is less than t, is less than 12.141 uh, plus 8, which is 20.141. Okay, go off the page. All right, and that's it. We've solved for it. So just, uh, again, to re review a bit, we were asked, when is the nail below water? We know that this is the modeling the height above water, so of course below zero must be when it's below water. Because I knew what this looked like, I knew you know, what I'm looking for, right? So I found uh, when I plug zero in for height, I solve for two different answers of time, and I had to get two different answers because of when the sign is positive or, or negative. So I did that using the Cartesian uh, coordinate system, I figured out in which two quadrants my sign is negative or positive. Then I went and plugged both those answers in and went to two separate branches like you see here. So this was at the point where my question broke off. Because I went in that Cartesian plane, uh, I plugged my numbers in. I got my two answers, which was great. Um, I said that it was below the water between those two numbers because I've already graphed it. I know what it looks like. and then I had to say that the exact same thing occurs a period later. I did that twice because you have 24 seconds to go through. And, um, and then we're done. So now we have our three answers. One, two, and three. And we've solved the question. All right, I'm sorry this was 25 minutes long, but I had to go through it slowly. So thanks a lot for watching.